teachers. Thanks for having me. So as I stated, oh, I made it without chopping the line. <laughs> well, back in my days, when I hear or heard the term chop, I would think about someone chopping some grass or chopping down a tree, but unfortunately today, it carried a different meaning. Why am I going to school? That was my question at the age of 14. Just as I was having that talk, I remember someone on the radio saying, have one thing to look forward to each week. That one thing for me was visual art class. Each Tuesday, I would look forward to art class. And as silly as it sounds, that mindset kept me in school. I was never a child who had his own room or even sometimes my own lunch. I would eat lunch most time out of the box cover of my friends. We used to tear off the box cover and give me a spoon of rice each. Sometimes, occasionally, some chicken skin and some meat. <laughs> this is my first lesson. You will need a community. You will need friends and people to look out for you if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Yes. Growing up, I was somewhat clueless. I didn't know if all boys are all girls school. So I thought all schools were okay. Therefore, my first day at Calabar was, oh, today is boys day. <laughs> And tomorrow, the girls will register. Sadly, that didn't happen. <laughs> I would come to school every day and only see boys. I was saddened by that reality. But why? That is life. I grew up with two sisters. And during primary school, majority of my friends were female. But as time progressed, I've come to terms. Next slide. <laughs> Notwithstanding, I had a community of young men to learn from. I got introduced to Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card games. And did you guys see that? Pokemon. Basketball, Taekwondo, and later down tracks. Any track at me here? Some I didn't think girls would have introduced me to. Every day I would look forward to track, track and field training. Sometimes I was the first to be present down by the field. Coach Michael Clark suggested that I do distance, even though I thought. I was sit for 100 and 200 meters. <laughs> but based on this guidance, I began to do long distance training. I enjoyed the challenge of knowing how it felt to get better at something hard. I was learning discipline. I was so in love with discipline that even after training, I would go home and do my program all over again with my cousin from a different school. I even I even encouraged him to join his school track team. Surprisingly, while I did all that practicing and training, I had never yet attended a track meet. Mr. Clark was so upset, and he labeled me as a joker. What Mr. Clark didn't know that was I used to work on Saturdays to send myself to school during the week. But, I decided to make a sacrifice, call work, and attend a track meet. It was my first time wearing spikes, track spikes. So when I stepped on the chevron or the track, I felt the grip and bumps in my stride. I felt like a superhuman because you know, training on the track field when I was attending Calabar was dirt. And sometimes the tractors would drive on the track field and, you know, very uncomfortable. 
My, my heat came up. I ran and I won. Mr. Clark was so stunned. I qualified for champs as an A-class athlete in my first goal. Unfortunately, I eventually developed a knee injury. <sighs> and I had to attend champs as a reserve. My dream of becoming an athlete was crushed. The coach was saying that it was some growing issue. What he done, I thought it was because I was malnourished. <laughs> I mean, I used to beg lunch at times, and I walk home from school all the way to Olympic Garden. The copper and thing. But I got a taste of my potential through discipline. And I never looked back. Quite literally, I was hungry for more. That taught me my second lesson. Discipline creates opportunity. Now to my third lesson was simple, simply the power of weight. I was a member of Rome Blue House, and sports day was the following day. During a house meeting, Miss Jarrett, my guidance counselor, and who is still a guidance counselor now, had mentioned that the house was without a banner, and it would have contributed to the points of the house. So, as poor as I was, I came up with this brilliant idea to create one myself. You can see on the slide right there. So after school, I walked down to halfway tree, into Pig's Fabric, purchased some fabric, walked over to the bookstore, purchased some glue, cartridge paper, some decoration. I came to sports day with the house banner, which I made all by myself. As house song, Song and my dark shades, as you can see right now. Because <laughs> deep down, swag was something I felt that I had invented. <laughs> Being injured, I was no longer classified a member of the track team, so I was qualified to participate in sports day. Though I hopped in every race, I won them all and was crowned champion boy. I did not receive any medal as the school could not afford them that year. That's what the most person told <laughs> However, <laughs> however, they had like three cakes to give away and I got two. One for a champion boy and one for the overall prize of the host because Rome did win that year. Next slide, next slide. Oh, that was me running. <laughs> Blue House. My final lesson is to follow your passion. Next slide. Art was my first love. So, whenever I had a free session, or the teacher wasn't present, even if like five, ten minutes passed, <laughs> you would sure to find me down at art class, down by Mr. Batis, Mrs. Bakers, Mr. Taylor, or even sometimes Mrs. Jarrett, the guidance counselor, because she was just cool like that. I was granted several awards for excellence in visual arts and won numerous competitions, which helped to fund my way through high school. I used to feed that competition because some how I thought could always win. <laughs> However, there was a point where CXC was just around the corner. But I had no intention of doing any, even though I was studying for eight subjects in class. I mean, I was barely making ends meet, trying to get to school daily. My mom was unemployed, and my father had recently migrated, just as I started from about the age of, age of 12. I didn't really have much of a plan. But one day, Mrs. Jarrett called me and she said, I was granted a scholarship to pay for my CXC. <laughs> Looking back, I kept asking myself, how did she know? Well, I guess that's what it takes to be a guidance counselor. Yeah. That June, I sat the eight subject and got six of them. Fast forward to more 
same time and applied for UTEC. Got accepted, did a four year program, and passed with honors. Woo! College dropout due to financial difficulties. <laughs> and I had no intention of going back. Somehow, from the guidance of someone who was much older than myself, has encouraged me to complete the investment I had made. So eventually, I did go back. During college, I started my own business. I bought two vehicles and my first property. Superhuman was my mindset and knowledge was my power. Everything I owned, I earned. And I did not chop any line or rob Miss Jen. Taught me, showed me that hard work will pay off, even if it's not the way you envision it. Discipline carried me through life, and the ability to never give, give up kept me pressing forward. I began to let this ripple into other pursuits. In 2017, I entered a hackathon and was awarded top hacker in Jamaica along with my team members. And recently, with a new press for Clean Energy Future, I enter an innovation challenge, and at the end of it, eDrive awarded my business venture, Solar is with, for its plan to help to push Jamaica into a clean energy future. Next slide. My last talk to leave you with is, don't get distracted by the noise around you. Focus on your goals. I'm, cur I'm currently a self-employed multimedia producer working from home. I serve several clients globally and my business was immune to the pandemic as I provide a virtual service 24-7. The skills I learned were mostly self-taught in a quiet, small room all by myself, using hours of focus. But through discipline and focusing on my goals, the returns of my effort compound with time. Yeah. Things will always take time. By sticking to it, it's the only way to reap the result. The heights of great man reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. They were, while they were, while they were companions swept, they were perfectly <laughs> upwards in the night. What I will leave you with is, Never trade your dreams for survival. Always seek out for opportunities, and where there are none, create them. Yes. Keep in the back, keep in the back, keep in the back of your mind that you are you matter, and no matter where you come from, you matter and deserve the best. Yes. So always put yourself first. Aim for the greatest. And as the school motor says, the almost for the highest.